Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and this is my May 2018 reading wrap-up. If you're not already aware, I do weekly wrap-ups of everything I read, watch, and listen to, but I also do monthly wrap-ups of just the books, which is what we're doing today. I'm going to start with the nerdy, hardcore stats and charts, and then move into what I read. In May, I read 20 books for a total of 6,602 pages. This takes into account converting audiobook minutes to pages, so 2,834 of those pages were actually 71.5 hours of audiobook. The age breakdown for these books was 11 adult books and 9 YA books, meaning 55% adult and 45% YA books. I read 16 novels, 2 graphic novels, and 2 plays. This month I read mostly contemporary at 70%, followed by 15% sci-fi and 5% each of fantasy, mystery, and romance. If you adjust for the amount of pages in each genre, sci-fi gets a bigger piece of the pie, which is unsurprising given sci-fi tends to have a larger page count, and mystery decreases because the mystery I read this month was a play. Most of these books, no surprise, came from the library, but I also read an ARC, borrowed from a friend, and bought myself a treat. I read seven audiobooks, seven hardcover books, five paperbacks, and one ebook. Half of my books were in the 300 to 399 page range, and 60% of them were published this year or last year. Most of these books were by female authors, but only half of the books had female protagonists, as I read six books where the protagonist falls under the category of ensemble. I read books set in the United States, United Kingdom, other worlds, and also a book each set in Japan, Pakistan, Trinidad, and France. In terms of diversity, I read a lot of queer content, as well as books that touched on race, were own voices, or had a combination of representation, but about 15% of the books I read didn't have any discernible diversity. In April, I asked nine booktubers to pick my TBR for May, and since some of them gave me multiple options, I decided to check ten books off that list. I did that, although I did end up reading one of those books, An Ember in the Ashes, at the tail end of April, so it won't be in this wrap-up. I'll put a graphic on the screen to denote which books were part of this project, and I will link that video down below. This was a pretty good reading month if you go by star ratings, which pretty much is always the case because I tend to pick up things I know I'm going to like. This month I had three three-star reads, two 3.5-star reads, five four-star reads, four 4.5-star reads, and six five-star reads. Let's start with the lowest rated book and work our way to the highest, shall we? In the three-star category we have Black Coffee. This is a play in three acts, it's an Agatha Christie mystery, and I originally figured I might like this one because it has Poirot as the main character, but it's incredibly racist because 1930s, and it relies really heavily on gender norms, which no thanks. It would, however, be interesting to see a play like this put on if they were to update the language. Even in the stage notes, there's misdirection, so it gives the audience time to theorize who could have possibly been the killer. The other play I read this month was also three stars, and that was Noises Off. This is one of those plays where it is way more fun to watch it than it is to read it, because half of the play is basically going through the stage notes of what the characters are doing while other people are talking on stage. So although you can sort of picture what's going on, it is way more fun to actually watch what's going on. The last three-star read was Sweet Southern Trouble. This is a contemporary romance between a football coach and a school teacher, and it's both a hate-to-love and fake-to-real relationship book. As I mentioned in my weekly wrap-up, it was fun to read outside of the usual genres that I read, but there were so many tropes and so many weird little problems that I had with it. To be honest, it's kind of hard for me to hate a reading experience unless something is absolutely terrible, so this was fine, but it's just not something I would really pick up again. Moving on to 3.5 star reads, I read A Darker Shade of Magic, which is the first in a trilogy. This book centers around a character that can travel between different versions of London. Or more accurately, different worlds that all seem to have one city called London. I definitely enjoyed this reading experience, and the magic system was really interesting, and I will probably finish the trilogy. But early on I got excited because I thought that the male main character who can travel between the worlds was having a love affair with the prince, and then it's revealed that they're brothers, and I was like, how did I misread that? Like, I don't understand. Also, as the book went on, they definitely had more of a familial bond, and I want that to continue, but I was just weirded out that I was like, oh yeah, they're lovers, that's fine. Wait, what, they're brothers? I'm so confused. My other 3.5 star read this month was Behold the Dreamer. This is about an immigrant family from Cameroon that comes over to the States and starts working for this very rich elitist family that works on Wall Street. And this book actually spans several years. We learn about the family's life in Cameroon, we learn about the process of moving to America, and how the husband was actually there for a couple of years before his to-be wife and their child was able to come over as well. He gets a job with that prominent family and has it for a little while, but this is set during the huge financial crash that happened in the States. And we see how this impacts both of these families differently. 
there are often parallels between the families and it was interesting to see how each of them adapted to the new situations. I also enjoyed that the author wrote a lot of the dialogue or even just description in pidgin English and included sections that weren't in English at all and didn't explain them. There was also a lot of talk about the different food that they ate that was Cameroonian that I've never had before. And if I still ate meat I would probably want to try every single one of those dishes and since I don't I would just have the ones that don't have meat in them. My first four star read was Anna and the French Kiss and I read this way at the beginning of the month. It's about a girl named Anna who is sent to Paris for her last year of high school because her dad is a rich novelist and basically it's a like a status thing where he's like I can afford to send my kid to high school in France so that's what I'm gonna do and doesn't even ask her if that's what she wants. I personally would have no problem with this if anyone wants to send me anywhere to study things please do because I like studying and I like traveling. In any case while she's there she falls into this group of friends she has this boy back home that she's sort of crushing on she thinks that when she goes back for winter break they're going to pick up where they left off but then she also has a crush on a boy in the friend group. It's cute, it's fluffy, it's enjoyable. If you don't think too hard while you're reading it, it's fine. If you start thinking about it too hard, you go, Anna, you're in Paris and you love movies. How did you not know there is a huge movie scene in Paris? Like, how does it take you like six months of your trip to find this out? My God, you have the internet. My next four star read also has Anna in the title and in the book and that is Anna in Between. This book is about a woman who was born in Trinidad but has been living in the States for the past 20 years and she's back home visiting her parents. While she's there she finds out that her mother has breast cancer and not only that but she's been hiding it for a couple of years basically ignoring it and thinking if I don't say anything and nobody else will say anything and I will never have to deal with this. This book is an incredibly slow burn and it has a lot to do with the character development of these family members as well as the people around around them and talks a lot about what it's like to be in between. While she's back home in Trinidad she's seen as not really still from the island because she's been in New York for so long and while she's in New York she is seen as African-American which fine is true but ignores so much else of her experience. The next four star read was another cute fluffy contemporary and that's to all the boys I've loved before. This book is about a biracial girl named Laura Jean who every time she falls in love with somebody and wants to fall out of it she writes them a letter and doesn't send it. She gets quite a surprise when one day boys start coming up to her saying, hey, I got your letter. Awkward. One of the boys happens to be her sister's ex-boyfriend and to extricate herself from that situation, she pretends to be dating somebody else. This book also had a fake to real relationship trope, but I found it written in such a charming way that I just didn't care. My next four star read was Obsidio, which is the third in the Illuminae Files trilogy. Not much I can tell you here as this is the third in a series, but this is written in a dossier format and I listened to the audiobook, which is a full cast recording, but if you get the physical books, they're are also really interesting to look at. You get different doodles and diagrams and sometimes when people are speaking in chats they're sending emojis and stuff like that. Not quite emojis but like that older version of emojis we had where you would have to like use different keys on the keyboard to create a picture basically. And my last four star read was My Brother's Husband. This is a manga about a man whose twin has died recently and his twin brother's husband comes to visit him in Japan. The art in this is really cute. I really love the protagonist's daughter as well as Mike the husband. And this deals a lot with the protagonist reflecting on his deep-seated homophobia that comes very strongly with the culture. Eventually there will be a second volume of this and I really want to read it. On to 4.5 star reads. The next one is actually another graphic novel and that is Sugar Town. This is just an itty bitty little graphic novel about this girl named Hazel who's on winter break in Portland. She's bisexual and polyamorous so she's updating her boyfriend back home about her adventures while also dating a dominatrix. For such a tiny graphic novel there is so much representation bisexuality, polyamory, kink, and sex worker. The art is adorable and if another volume comes out I would totally read it. My next 4.5 star read was Puddin which is the follow up to Dumplin and the happiest surprise about this book for me was that it is a dual narrative between two different girls that we met in the first book. Now usually when we have a dual narrative in YA it tends to be between a girl and a boy who you figure are probably gonna fall in love. And this book kind of flips that on its head in that these are unlikely companions and yet by the end of the book they have a lot of love for each other. I was also enamored with how many times the two different protagonists stories seem to be on the same track. Millie is used to people judging her based on her appearance, but so is Callie. And although she's classically beautiful and that's the judgment that Millie has for Callie, she is also biracial and that causes some people to look down on her just from looking at her. I loved all the intersectionalities, the side characters were really well fleshed out and I enjoyed this book. My next 4.5 star read was Before Ever After. This one concerns a woman whose husband has died and a couple of years later a man shows up on her doorstep looking exactly like him. This book kind of balances between five years in the past and what's going on 
on at present and five years in the past when she met her husband, she was on this road trip of Europe. So immediately I'm drawn in because I love traveling. Having a road trip novel that is also a romance is adorable to me. But then you also have this extra intrigue of this guy who looks exactly like him and trying to figure out how all of that fits in. In addition to those five years ago flashbacks, every time he tells a story on that tour, we also flash back those hundreds of years to that story. I love learning little tidbits of history when I go on trips like that, so I just adored this and now I just really want to go on a trip of Europe again and always. Forever. My last 4.5 star read was Eleanor Alfont is completely fine, and no, no she's not. Eleanor had a very unconventional upbringing. She's currently living in Glasgow but used to live in London with her mother. And one of the best things about this book is it lets you figure out over time just how unconventional her upbringing was. It doesn't lay out all the facts right at the beginning, it keeps you guessing until you finally know exactly what happened in her past. Eleanor is incredibly well-read and well-versed in literature, but is not well-versed in current social norms. I found that the way the character spoke and even thought was the most interesting part of the writing because she was incredibly verbose, but she was also incredibly judgmental. There is a lot that happens in this book and I do not want to spoil any of the little twists, so I just really highly recommend that everyone pick this up. On to my five star reads, the first one being a reread, which is Leah on the Offbeat. I found out after I read my physical copy of the book that Shannon Purser does the audiobook and I just had to listen to that. She read it pretty much exactly how I pictured Leah in my head, so that was good. I've seen a lot of people talk about how this is actually a really light and fluffy read that doesn't have very high stakes and therefore they can only really give it like a three star rating. And for me, star ratings are so subjective. I mostly go on, how did reading that book make me feel and did it have a good impact on me? In my view, something doesn't have to be an important piece of literature to be a five-star read. My next five-star read was Only Human, which is the third in the Themis Files trilogy. Much like Obsidio, I can't tell you much about this because it is the third book and it finishes out a trilogy. This one is also written in a dossier format and I also listened to this one because, again, it has a full cast recording. So if you've read and enjoyed the Illuminae Files and you want something similar but adult, this is where you go. This one is very high stakes and I absolutely fell in love with the characters and I needed to know if the human race was going to still exist by the end of it. My next five star read was Ship It, which is the arc I read and it came out early this month. This is about a girl who is huge into the fandom of this TV program that is very much like Supernatural. And when she finds out that the cast is coming to a comic con near her, she goes to it and goes to that panel and something a little bit disastrous happens. You see, Claire writes fan fiction and it's a popular headcanon of the fans that the two main characters are in love. However, one of the actors on the show and on the panel kind of snorts at this derisive and it causes a huge PR nightmare. What's great about this is it's a dual narrative between Claire, the fan, and Forrest, the actor in the show, and there are definitely points where both of them go over the line of what's appropriate. Claire basically makes it her mission to have this headcanon confirmed on the show, whereas Forrest is trying really hard to get the lead in this big video game thing that he loves. And any bad press releases or PR that makes him out to be anything but the manliest man of all time, T.A is just really not going to help his cause. I love this book because of the fandom element, the queer element, and just seeing different perspectives. My next five star read was Written in the Stars and I was not prepared for it. For some reason going into this I thought this was going to be a contemporary fluffy type of thing. And it starts out that way. And I think it's very deliberate that it starts out that way and then things go very wrong. This is about a Pakistani American girl who is not supposed to have any boyfriends because her parents are supposed to pick her husband but she has had a boyfriend for about the past year. He is also Pakistani American. Her parents find out and they take her on a trip back to Pakistan to show her her roots, but really they are there to arrange her marriage. This book goes incredibly dark, so trigger warnings for physical and sexual assault. And it is not something I expected to see in YA literature, and I'm so glad that I did. The author notes at the end that she is part of an arranged marriage, and that they can work and they can be great, but all too often children are forced into marriages still, and nobody really talks about it. I read this cover to cover without getting off my couch, and if you haven't read it yet, you definitely should. My next five star read was All Our Wrong Todays. This is a time travel novel, and it is written in such an interesting way. First off, if you have the option, listen to the audiobook, because it's read by the author and he does a phenomenal job. This book starts out talking about other forms of time travel in media and how they are wrong because the science behind them is not solid, and goes on to talk about how the protagonist's father has actually fixed those problems and is about to send people back 
back in time as basically a tourist operation. You see, Tom, our protagonist, lives in a very utopian version of 2016 and somehow accidentally ends up in our version of 16, which is very dystopian to him. Something that's very fun about this is it plays with the grammar of talking about time travel. There's so many tenses you need to use that you wouldn't use in normal life because nobody talks like that actually, but if you're talking about something that would have happened but didn't happen because of a different timeline, it gets confusing. But he makes an effort to make it as clear as possible, which is helpful. Also throughout this book we really see the protagonist grow as a person, which is so important, because he starts out as a 32 year old who is kind of lost and aimless and really has to grow up to survive this situation. This is definitely my favorite book that deals with time travel, by far. And my last five star read and my favorite book of the month was The Bright Siders by Jen Wilde. I've been waiting for this one for quite a while and I loved it. In fact, I ended up getting it from my local bookstore a few days early which is a story I've already talked about, so I'll link that. In any case, The Bright Siders is about a girl named Emmy King, who is part of a band called The Bright Siders, and they are child rock stars. She, however, does not have a great home life. Her parents are ex rock and rollers who never gave up the partying lifestyle, so she basically raised herself. In fact, even though she's only 17 when the book starts, she's been living in a hotel for the last six months because she cannot stand living with her parents anymore, but is not old enough to legally buy a house. Now, as can happen with some child stars, she starts to go off the rails a little bit and realizes she needs to figure out what she's doing with her life, what's wrong, and the people that are wrong for her, and get them out of her life, and figure out how to exist so that the band doesn't break up. From the get-go, we as readers know that Emmy is bi, she's in fact dating a girl when this book starts, but she hasn't come out to her fans yet. Alfie, one of her bandmates, is genderqueer and has been out since before the band started. But for some reason, because she's the only person in the band that uses she, her pronouns, she gets a lot of shit from the media. Part of that is because of the patriarchy, and part of that is because she does make some terrible life choices. This book is about finding a support system that is healthy for you and thriving in it. I absolutely adored it, and I can't believe I have to wait until 2019 for Jen Wilde's next book because I want to read it now, please. I read the synopsis a couple of months ago and I'm just like, can I have that book now? Because it's so... I want it now. If you want to hear me talk more about these books or other books for that matter, the playlist for my weekly entertainment wrap-ups is always linked down below. If you have read any of these, please let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you next time. Bye!